Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And I'm going away on holiday tomorrow. I'm going on a surprise road trip, which I am really excited about. I literally know nothing about it. But I also have about 300 houseplants and some of them have quite specific care needs. So I thought I would put this video together. I've been kind of, I've been developing a system over the last couple of weeks that I really hope is going to work to keep all of my plants happy while I'm away. We are in the UK and we're predicted to have an absolutely awful heat wave this coming week, which although is going to be great for my road trip, it is not going to be good for my plants. The last time it got to this temperature in the UK, it was about 45 degrees in this room, which is crazy. So yeah, I thought I would, I'd walk you through everything that I'm doing in order to make sure my plants stay happy, give you some tips on how, if you're going away, maybe you could help to do the same for your plants. And then also in the middle of this video, I thought I'd do a little bit of a vlog of the road trip because as I say, my friend is taking me on this completely random surprise thing and I'm really, really intrigued about it and I think it will be quite fun to share. So I'm gonna do a little bit of that and then at the end of the video, I'll come back and I will give you some updates on the plants, let you know how they all did, let you know whether or not the system worked and yeah, hopefully it'll be useful and hopefully you enjoy it. But yeah, let's get into it. So this room is pretty much chaos at the moment, hence why I'm not filming at my normal spot at the table because I can't actually get to the table right now. But I thought I would just go through some kind of general things for when you're leaving your plants. And it might seem really obvious, but the first one is watering. You definitely wanna make sure that everything is hydrated before you go. I've done my absolute best to time it so that everything is ready for a water around about the same time because I know I've got some plants that like to be constantly moist, some that like their soil to dry out. And I've just kind of, I've left things a little bit longer than maybe I should with some of my other plants so that I can try and do it all literally the day before I go. And I think I have managed to, and I'm still going, I think I've managed to get about 90% of my collection watered, which I'm pretty happy with, to be honest. There's probably going to be a few little things to do while I'm away, but I'm really lucky. So I, I've been looking after my mum's garden for the last week while she's been away, and she's very kindly agreed to look after my plants. And so the system is the system that I've put in place is partly for her and can be used if you're just going away and you don't have anybody to come in either. But I would probably say if you're going to be away for more than a week and especially if it's in the middle of summer and watering is more regular and stuff like that, I would definitely recommend getting somebody in. If you don't have a, a friend or a family member or anything like that, then on Facebook groups and stuff like that, there's there's services where you can inquire and planty people will be able to come in. My mum is, so I've said this in other videos before, my mum is great with garden plants and not the best on the whole with house plants. So my system, my system is designed for somebody that is not a planty person. So I've tried to really break it down and make it as easy as possible. And I'm kind of hoping that my mum won't actually have to do a lot while I'm away because I think I've been fairly on top of some of the things that I've done. But yeah, as I say, with watering, if you can get the majority done before you go, then fantastic. But if you're in any doubt as to whether or not a plant actually needs a drink, don't take the risk and go ahead and water it. I found this out very recently myself. I went away to Torquay for about a week and I, specifically my Philodendron Melanochrysum, I was like, oh, is it ready? I wouldn't personally water it yet, but I think in a few days it will be ready. And I watered it and it got root rot and I came back to a plant that was pretty much pretty much dying. I have chopped and propagated it, but it was not, not a good decision. So yeah, I would say if, if you can't get anybody in and if you do have plants that aren't quite ready for a drink, perhaps consider transferring them to a different substrate such as PON, for example, because PON can be used in combination with self-watering pots and most plants seem to be really happy in self-watering pots with PON. So that is, that's definitely an option. I mean, if you don't have many plants and you're worried about them, you could consider transferring all of them to pond. If you are gonna be repotting plants, and this is another point, but if you're gonna be repotting plants, whether it's into pond or just repotting them in general, 
don't do this right before you go away because sometimes plants can take a while to adjust to their new environment. If you've noticed on my channel, if you watch my other videos, you will have seen that over the last week and a bit, I've been doing a lot of repot and chat videos and there is a reason for that. I've been wanting to get lots of repotting done with time to be able to let my plants adjust before I go away and leave them. So if there are any issues, I can be about to monitor them if that makes sense. One of the main pros to repotting some plants before you go away, obviously only repot them if they actually need repotting. But for example, I had a Calathea that I repotted in a repot and chat video a few days ago from filming this and that Calathea is one that likes its soil to be fairly consistently moist. So you might call it quite a high maintenance house plant. And I think giving it a little bit of extra room in that pot just means that the soil isn't gonna dry out as quickly. So my mum won't have to worry about watering it as much. I would have thought she'll probably only need to water it maybe once while I'm away. And the system, God, the system, it sounds so official. The color coding system that I've done is more just for me, for my peace of mind. And so that she feels like she's kind of got a bit more direction to follow instead of just guessing because I don't want her just watering plants and guessing and things going wrong because I do that myself and I am used to them. So yeah, if a plant is ready for a repot, I would say do that with as much time as possible before you go and kind of just start, start preparing early. If you're going away and you want all your plants to survive, it's always good to start early. If you've tried and you're absolutely not able to get anybody in, then I would say there's so as I'm speaking from where I am right now in the UK, as I say, it's very, very, very warm here. Soil does dry out quicker. Plants do tend to need more attention at this time of year. The first thing that you should absolutely do is try and bring the temperature down and often temperature and light kind of correlate. So I have moved, and this is even with my mum looking after them, I've moved a lot of my plants. I'll put some clips in and I'll show you in a minute but I've moved a lot of plants to a lower light spot so that the room won't be so hot and the light they're receiving will mean that hopefully they won't absorb as much water. I've also, you can probably see this screen behind me. I put that up during the last heat wave because I was worried about plants burning, but it does just, it does just help to stop quite a lot of direct sun from coming in through that window and making my plants dry out quicker and all that sort of stuff, the risk of burning. So if you're able to create some kind of little like shade canopy for your plants, maybe use a filtered curtain or something like that, that again is a really great shout and is gonna mean that they require much less attention. I know I just spoke about pond as well as a substrate to use with a self-watering pot to help make sure that your plants stay hydrated. I will, I'll put some information, I made a video on it a while ago, I'll put some information about pond on in the description box below if you're not familiar with it but some other things that people do and I have tried both before but a really common one is a wick system and that's basically where you have a cup of water next to your plant and you run a wick or a piece of string from the water to the soil of your plant and it just kind of helps your plant to absorb a little bit of water and the other one is again fairly similar these things you can buy called watering globes I have tried both and I've also made DIY watering globes with like a bottle and stuck a hole in the lid and just kind of let it drip down into the soil gradually. And while I don't, I, there's, there's much worse things that you could be doing. I don't think it's a bad thing to do. I just think targeted watering, like watering in one area is never gonna be good for your plants because the full root system doesn't absorb all the water from the full soil. It can lead to a watering imbalance and issues and all that sort of stuff. So I would not personally choose to do that unless it was kind of like last case scenario. I was going away for weeks on end. It was really warm weather and I couldn't get anyone in. I have, however, done some kind of self-watering things in other areas of my plants, which I will take you through and show you in a minute. It. But the other thing that I forgot to say, so I spoke about repotting plants in advance. The other thing, and I did a making a prop box video the other day, and basically I was I was moving lots of propagations that were just in moss to, to boxes so that the moss doesn't have to be constantly kept hydrated. That kind of creates its own little microclimate and it will it will essentially stay hydrated and I won't need anybody to do anything to them. These ones here as you can see are in moss and 
if I was to leave them for a week and a half without hydrating them, then chances are it would just completely dry out and they wouldn't survive. So I don't want to leave my mum responsible for trying to keep moss hydrated along with everything else because this can be this can be a little bit more maintenance. So I think I am gonna pop these ones up just because they wouldn't fit into the propagation box that I made. But yeah, I'm gonna pop these ones up. This is a fairly hardy plant, so I'm not too worried about it. But yeah, if you have got lots of things in moss or even perlite and you're worried about that drying out when you're away then I would highly recommend getting them into a propagation box. There's also things to say on things like timer systems for grow lights and humidifiers and stuff like that and I think I'll kind of take you through that as I take you around and explain everything but yeah I, I'm i gonna finish setting up my plants for my holiday and finalizing everything and making sure I'm happy with everything. I also made my mum, bless her, she, she's so stressed and I'm so stressed, but I made my mum a little document basically getting everything down and writing so that she can look at it if she needs to. So I'll pop that in in a minute. If you want to read it, pause it because it's, it's about three pages long, but I will pop that on the screen. And yeah, I'm gonna finish setting everything up and then I'll take you around, I'll explain a bit more and then I will get ready to leave my plants and go on holiday. So this room is a complete mess at the moment. I've already done probably about two, three hours of watering today and I'm about to crack on with some more now because there is literally never ending watering to do at the moment and I wanna get it all done before I leave if possible. Also, I've had a couple of plants that I've pest treated. This one didn't actually have pests on it, but it was next to a plant that did have spider mites very recently, and I know it's very susceptible to pests, so I did decide to treat it. That's definitely a good thing to do if you if you suspect anything before you go. Do not wait until you come back. I've been in that position before, and it's it's literally the worst. You can come back to absolute mayhem if you suspect a pest problem and let it go untreated, so... Yeah, I treated that plant and a couple of other ones as well. A couple of the things that I'm really scared that I'm going to miss when I'm away is firstly, my white princess philodendron, I'm pretty sure, is trying to bloom. I wasn't quite sure what that was, but the general consensus from you guys seems to be that she's giving me an inflorescence, a bloom, I don't know. And I've never had a philodendron bloom for me before, so very, very sad that I might miss that. And then the other one is my Hoya Sarawak is trying to flower as well and this is going to be such a beautiful big bloom when it does pop and I have a very very sad feeling I'm going to miss it so I'm going to have to get my mum to send me some updates but yes right I'm gonna go finish setting up and then I will give you give you a tour of it Okay, right. I think I'm done. I think I'm all set, ready to go. It feels very weird in here. I usually have plants hanging all the way along the top there, but I've I've moved quite a lot of them. Um, so I've done this color coding system. So basically, I've I've given literally every single pot a sticky label with a color on it, so that my mum can match it to the key, which I will pop on the screen so you can see what I mean. She can match it to that, and she can kind of get an idea of what plant likes what, how moist the soil needs to stay, all that sort of stuff. And so for some of my plants, so for example, that one is probably, so it's a peperomia, I would usually say it's probably a red, like I try and keep the soil consistently moist on that plant, but I know that underwatering is always better than overwatering, and I would much prefer to come back to stuff that's been underwatered as opposed to given too much. So I've kind of marked that down and I've done that with quite a few of my plants. And I've said to my mum to open my cabinet if it gets above about 30 degrees, because as I say, it's, I mean, I'm actually filming this the next day. It's first thing in the morning and it's already 22 degrees in there. It's going to be a warm day. But so yeah, colour codes on everything. I've tried to group plants with similar lighting requirements and colours together just to kind of make her life a little bit easier. And then in terms of, so keeping the moss poles hydrated, what I've done is so I've been testing this over the last few weeks. I've just put plastic cups on top of them and 
I've kind of figured out how much water needs to drip down into that each day. I've made the teeniest, tiniest hole at the bottom of that. And this is absolutely something you can do as well if you're going away and you don't have someone coming in just to kind of help make sure those aerial roots have a nice bit of water to keep them going. And I've also done the same on top of my Monstera dubia plank here, just because it's, I only replanked this plant recently and it kind of needs to stay a little bit moist so that it can continue to attach. So I have, I've put one there and that can just kind of very gradually drip down. I haven't filled it yet. Uh, but also this is just very random. I've put a little pin in here because the growth of this plant is trying to go completely off the plank. As you can see on this side, it pretty much has gone off the plank and I think I'm going to chop and propagate that section when I get home. But I'd like to try and encourage this to be quite central. So I've just positioned it so that hopefully in the time I'm away, if it does put out more aerial roots and kind of grip on, it will do so in the right place. But yeah, so I've got, I've got cups on pretty much everything. And I've just said to my mum, if she could just fill them to the line each day, because that's, that seems to be from my from my testing the kind of amount they need each day in order to stay hydrated but not like ridiculously overwatered if that makes sense and that's very similar as well to the watering globe thing that i spoke about earlier in this video a lot of people do similar things like this they'll just make a tiny hole in a bottle a cup something like that and leave it on top of the soil and yeah that is an option i i wouldn't particularly like to have to do that with my plants just because Obviously, you're giving your plants water when they might not actually need it. It's not going to be it's not going to be a thorough soak through. It's going to be gradual, but it's definitely an option if you can't do anything else. And then coming through here, so bless my mum, I've literally wrecked her house with plants. But I've I've taken a lot of my plants that I know can survive in lower light, even if they're not low light plants per se. It's only a short period of time. It's only just over a week I'm going to be away for. I would much prefer them to be in lower lighting conditions and dry out a little bit slower so that she doesn't have to do as much and this is just a really good thing as well if you are going away and you want to make sure that your plants don't dry out just move them slightly down in their lighting conditions and yeah although it's not perfect growing conditions for them it's it's not gonna kill them they're gonna be fine i have all the faith that they are going to be fine fingers crossed and then over here i've set up so these um I've got some of my low light plants just there at the top and I've waxed a little humidifier behind them in here so that they've kind of got got some constant humidity. And then again, I've tried to group plants as much as I can here. The yellow shelf here, I've got a lot of stuff that's either in pond or probably won't need to be watered again for the next nine days. So I have just kind of said that shelf, that shelf will be fine. And then I've got grow lights here as well, so that the plants, because some of these obviously are fairly high light plants and I don't want them to suffer. And then I've also said to my mum, so some of my propagations that don't, that are in moss, but don't have um, drainage, I have just filled a little bit of water at the bottom of the pot. I mean, that's just, I wouldn't usually do that much, but I think that's just going to be enough to keep the moss hydrated and mean that she won't have to do anything at all while I'm away to them. I have also just said to her, please send me pictures of anything doesn't look right and I will, I'll let you know what to do. Don't just guess. But yeah, and then I've put all my propagation boxes down there. Nothing will need doing to them. These grow lights I've put on a timer system as well. So they will come on and off automatically every single day, meaning that my mum won't have to do anything at all, which is really great. I've got another one for my seedlings set up in another room. And again, that will just mean that she won't have to worry about anything. But yeah also so i've told told my mum all about humidifiers and stuff like that and i haven't actually brought my fan through here yet but i i will in a minute i've told her to just run the fan at the same time the humidifier is on so that it just helps to circulate the humidity and it isn't just contained in one place obviously it is going to be it's going to be ridiculously warm this week and that is the thing that i'm the most scared about to be honest because this room i mean it's a glass ceiling and it literally is like a greenhouse. It gets so, so, so hot. And I did have some issues with plants the last time it got this hot. So I'm really hoping and praying that everything will be fine. But I feel like I've kind of done all I possibly can do. I've actually got a shelf of succulents and stuff like that over here that won't need to be done at all while I'm away. I wouldn't have thought. Oh, it's my mum's cat asleep on the sofa. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I'm feeling pretty prepared. I feel like everything should be should be okay and yeah i'm going to go pack for my road trip and then i'll i'll take you with me and we'll see my plants in 9 days yay 
So I have just got back from my mystery road trip. Oh my goodness, it was absolutely incredible. Off we go! <laughs> Can you take your towel off? Okay. Why is it so busy and it's so early in the morning? Oh my God! I'm gonna cry. <laughs> and I know I said I was gonna do a vlog of it in the middle of this video, but to be honest, I think it kind of deserves its own video. So I will get that up in the next couple of days. And when it's up, I will link it down below. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go to bed because I'm absolutely knackered and then in the morning, I will take you through how all the plants did. There's been a few dramas, but I think on the whole, everything looks really good. So I'll take you through everything. My mum, bless her, also vlogs her experience of looking after them, which is just the greatest thing in the world. But this one here is looking healthier. The humidifier's gone on. Got some little flowers coming here. That's rather and it's so hilarious and so adorable so that will be in the vlog with the road trip but yeah i'm gonna go to bed and i will show you all the updates in the morning so it's the next morning i haven't filmed a video in 12 days now i don't think so i feel a little bit kind of drowsy and still in holiday mode and not back into filming mode so bear with me but on the whole, I've gone around and kind of given everything an initial inspection and I am pretty happy with how everything's doing. There has been a little bit of drama here and there, but on the whole, I would say I'm pretty happy. I think with the heat being the way that it had, my mum said that it got to 46 degrees in this room at one point, which is just ridiculous. And none of my plants can really cope in heat that high. So I think all things considered, I am happy. I know the last time there was a heat wave in the UK, I was running around manically trying to kind of do things to plants and make sure they all survived. And I had issues then. So the fact that they're all alive and looking fairly good makes me very happy. So, right, I will take you around in a minute and give you kind of like just a general overview, but the one that has not made it. This is, this is very sad. This is my Alocasia Dragon Scale. And as you can see, it's, I mean, it's not looking good at all. My mum texted me about four or five days into my holiday with a photo of this plant. She was like, it's really wilted. The soil's bone dry, should I water it? And I was like, yes, that's what the sticky labels are for. The soil should never dry out. But anyway, she gave it a really, really, really big drink. And I think because it was so dry, the water probably just overwhelmed the roots. I don't know if they had time to drain or not. But I got back and I was like, maybe I can check the roots and maybe it'll be fine. And I went to just kind of lift it up and that happened. So it has completely rotted, which is such a shame. It's such a beautiful plant. But as I say, if it's just this one out of almost 300 plants, then I'm I'm not going to complain. It's, it's going to happen. And as I say, especially with the heat and everything like that, I I understand. It's fine. And then the next one is my Sodoroy F. And if you look at its leaves there, you can see they're really kind of mottled and I don't know if it's down to overwatering. I haven't had a chance to kind of properly check over it. Ah, I found the cause. It's got thrips, damn it. Um, I don't know, I might need to put a clip in, but yeah, oh my God. It's got thrips really badly. I guess I'll be doing a pest treatment today as well as a very, very, very big water. How annoying. Ah, well, these things happen. So that one's got thrips and probably some of the ones around it have also got thrips because there are quite a lot on that plant. But I'm just gonna put it on the floor actually. But apart from that, I've actually had some really positive growth updates as well. I think the heat, if it's balanced with good watering, can do incredible things for your plants. So my Hoya Sarawak, this is the one that was trying to flower before I went away. And actually when I got home last night, it still hadn't fully popped, but this morning it's starting to go. And I am just so excited about this because this is a plant that hasn't done a huge amount for me in the time that I've had it. And obviously it's so big and mature and the fact that it's giving me a little bloom. I mean, it looks, it looks quite funny. It doesn't quite look in the right place, but yeah, the fact it's blooming for me makes me so incredibly happy. And then also my one of my Anthurium clarinerviums. So when I got back last night, this one was bone dry. Like it, honestly, the soil was so, so, so dry and all of the inflorescences, infructescences had just flopped down. And I was just like, oh my God, no, because this is one of the ones that I pollinated. So I gave it a really late night water and I was like, please be okay in the morning. And it has perked up this morning. And as you can see this, I don't know if you'll be able to tell people in camera, 
but this infrared essence has really come a long way in the time that I've been away. It's really, really full and I can see the berries starting to form. So I'm really excited about that. This would be a plant that I would be devastated if I lost because obviously pollination takes such a long time. And this one's, this one's my most well-established pollinated anthurium. So yeah, I'm very glad that that is now doing okay. But yeah, I will, I'll take you off the tripod and I'll take you round and I'll kind of give you a general overview of everything. But as I say, on the whole, I'm happy. So I just went to take a shot of the thrips on this plant and I've also noticed it's got spider mites as well down here. You might not be able to, yeah, you can kind of tell. Oh, so it's no wonder this plant's looking a bit beaten up. So I'm gonna have to properly, properly treat this plant and isolate it for a while. But as I say, these things happen. It's not the end of the world. Um, right, so this is this is kind of what everything's looking like at the moment. And as you can tell, the majority is looking lush and green and fairly happy. As I say, I have got some leaves on my big Alocasia portadora over here, which I will take you around and show you. There you go, you can see that, like big yellowing leaves. But that does just tend to kind of be the cycle of Alocasia. I mean, this plant was quite dry when I got home, but... It's such a big, well-established plant. It needs a lot of water to kind of sustain that growth. And so if it's dropping a few younger leaves, it's not the end of the world. Oh, another one as well that I was going to show you that isn't doing very well. This one here, I can't remember the name of this plant. I was going to call it a Ripsalis, but I know that it's actually not. I can't remember. But I didn't think this would be one that would need watering at all when I was away. But as I say, it's been so warm. You can see at the top there, certain bits of it have completely dried out. So... Yeah, I think I think it's going to be fine, but I think I'm going to have to give it a really good chop back. And then all of the ones here, from what I've seen so far, look fairly good. Like my pink princess is doing amazingly, and she's giving me another really pinky leaf, which I'm really happy about. But yeah, I think all of these ones... Oh, little growth update. That's exciting. Um, I think all of these ones are doing okay. I've also got a beautiful new leaf on my Monstera Deliciosa, which I'm really happy about. And, oh my God, <laughs> these are just like positive growth updates now. But my Dubia is doing so well. Do you remember at the beginning of this video, I said I put the pin there to try and help its growth kind of stay in the centre of the pole? It has worked. <laughs> but the growth has also completely come off the pole at the back. So I think there's really no option, unless I want it to be on both sides of the plank, there's no option but to chop oh my god is that a thrip is that another thrip are you a thrip oh he's gone okay i don't think that was a thrip but i will be pest checking all of my plants today if i possibly can but i mean with the majority it's just things like very dry soil like that's an alocasia fry deck and it shouldn't be that dry but yeah also same with calatheas you'll see in my mum's vlog um in my holiday video but yeah that one she i don't think she kind of maybe kept on top of watering as much and I don't blame her at all because there's a lot to do here but on the whole I think everything's looking fairly okay there's just plants everywhere and then down here my white princess philodendron has given me this beautiful new leaf from the time that I'm away and the flower on her still hasn't popped but look at <laughs> I just said look really weirdly look look at the size of that I feel like it's probably gonna go in a few days and I'm really not quite sure what to do about it when it does. I don't know whether or not to... I'm literally, I'm not making a prepping plants for holiday video. I'm just getting really distracted and going back into plant tour mode. Um, but yeah, I will figure out what I'm going to do about the flower because I don't want it to stunt the growth of the plants. But I'll keep you updated on that. But yeah, I think, obviously, as I say, there's things that really need watering. I can tell there's some kind of curly plants, like that one there. You can see all its leaves are curled and stuff like that. But on the whole, I think everything is good. My cabinet plants over here as well, they're looking really healthy and those are the ones that I was kind of the most worried about because already it's seven o'clock in the morning and it's 27 degrees in there at the moment. You can see obviously a few little yellow leaves and stuff like that but I think I'm fairly happy. I really hope that you enjoyed this video, I hope you found it useful. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day and I will see you in the next video.